Today we're having a little bit of fun reproducing this button in the Apple Store app. That's coming right up. Hey everybody, welcome back. Play Baudier. My name is Alex, and if this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to this channel where you're gonna get NativeScript tips, tricks, and tutorials. We do NativeScript Angular, NativeScript Core, NativeScript with Vue, all sorts of NativeScript topics. And today we're gonna be reproducing a button that I found, and I thought, this is a pretty cool button. Let's create this in NativeScript. I was taking a look at the Apple Store app on the iPhone, drooling over the new MacBook Pros with their 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty cool for video, and I came across this button. So this is a short one today without further ado let's take a look at how to do this all right this one's going to be mostly styling work let's pop open our app folder right here and here's main page xml this is just hello world template which i'm going to just uh copy pretty much i'm going to bring in a file that i just screenshotted on my iphone here i'm going to drop it right in here for reference i'll call it screenshot there it is this is essentially the button that we're trying to copy right here and so far we're not even close with our button <laughs> that's because this is just the hello world template okay let's get rid of some of this stuff i'll convert this to a grid layout which is now becoming my favorite layout and i believe at the top we have let's see discover so i know this is not important but hey details right so there is our discover title i'm going to delete this label and this label i'm going to delete the tab event because we don't care and i'm going to delete this class because we don't care and the text on the button says create your style create your style all right let's take a look so there's that image and there is our simulator with our default button style. Now, I'm just visually comparing the font and the font actually looks pretty much the same to me. I'm not a font expert, but I don't think I'm gonna mess around with the font. It looks pretty good to me. And that could be just because this is Apple and this is Apple and that's their default font and the default font is the same. All right, so now we have a button. I'm gonna show you a new, well, it's not new, but I rarely use this thing and it's called the content view element. I'm going to show you this component. So I'm going to wrap this button inside a content view. What's a content view? A content view is simply an element that holds, that contains another element inside of it. Just one element. It's like a wrapper, but it's a very basic one, very simple one. It doesn't have as much processing to calculate all the layout stuff as a stack layout or a grid layout. Content view is very simple and it's very light. And that's why I'm going to use it here to wrap the button. So I'm going to throw a class on it. I'm gonna call this button wrapper. And I'm also gonna give a class to our button. This is gonna be button colors. By the way, this is what it looks like. You don't see the content view, but it is there wrapping the button. So that's our structure. Let's go ahead and go into our app.css file. This is where the work, where the magic is gonna happen. So I'm gonna create a button wrapper class here. And if I do a background color here, let's give it aqua, you'll get to visualize what this content view looks like. And right now, as you can see, it's taking up that whole space, pretty much just tightly wrapping that button. If I click anywhere around there, you can see that I'm tapping on the button itself. Now, let's go ahead and add the button colors class here and give it a different background color, like, I don't know, blue here. And you'll see that we no longer see that content view. We just see the button. All right. Why do I need the content view? Because that's where our magical rainbow color is gonna live. So let's start with defining the actual button styles. I'm gonna define a font size here and I'm gonna make it just a tiny bit smaller, 14. And I want that color of the font to be black. I wanna limit its height. Let's set that to 36 and the width Oops, not widows, width. Let's make that 150. All right, so there's our button and you can see that we still have that aqua color on the button wrapper, which we're gonna also style. So let's give this a height. You know, I'm just gonna copy these attributes right here from the button for now. It's gonna be a little bit different. And we're gonna give this a border radius because the button is circular. Let's give it a border radius of 20. 20 is gonna be more than half of the total height, which is going to mean that its maximum border radius is going to be half of the height. It's not going to be more than that. So that's what's going to make it a circular button. We can also give it 50% border radius, but in my case, 20 will work just fine. Okay, we can't really see anything because there is no border. If we want to see something, we would give it a border color, let's say blue and then we need a border width. Let's make that one, for example, and now we'll be able to see that. 
let's uh, give the border width and color to the button itself. And we'll make this one red and border width will be one. And we don't actually see that because button wrapper is the same size as the button itself. So let's make the button actually a little bit smaller. Let's make the button 34 and 148, which is just two points smaller than our wrapper itself. All right, now you can see that we can see that red. So we need a border radius here too. Let's set a border radius for the button itself. So now we have a circular button and a circular content view around that two borders. All right, now we need to get some colors. All right, so here here is that image. Let's get some colors in there. Now, I know there's probably a ton of plugins and you can tell me if there's any really cool ones down below in the comments. But I have always been a Photoshop guy and I always like using Photoshop. So I'm going to pop this open in Photoshop and I'm going to zoom in here and just get these colors. So I'm going to have four stops. It looks like let's get a color picker here and my dropper is going to go on this one. All right, there's our first stop. So I'm going to get four stops here. I'm going to take this point, this point, this point, and then this point over here. You probably know what I'm trying to get at. We need a gradient here and the gradient is going to be on the wrapper itself. So we don't need this border. I was just demonstrating the border to you so you can kind of tell where these components lie in relation to each other. What we do need is actually a background. So background is going to have a linear gradient and we're going to move from the left to the right. So I'm going to say to right. And the first stop, first color stop is going to be, oh, did I not copy it from Photoshop? Right here. I'm going to copy that, set back here, and that's going to be that yellowish color, comma. Then we need the second stop, the third, and the fourth. So let's go over here. I'm going to pick this color right here as the second stop. And then let's go ahead and get the third color, which is going to be this blue right here. Why am I deciding on those spots? I don't know. It just seems right. And the rest is kind of interpolated in between the other colors. There's that one. And finally, we're going to take that green one on the very end. Let's copy that one over. And that's all for our gradient. So there's our background. Now let's take a look at this. And we're pretty good right now. We got that color in there, but we don't need to have the red border here on the button itself. What we do need, though, is a background, and that's going to be white. All right. So let's take a look at that. And we're almost there. Now we just need to make sure that our sizes are correct. So I want to make our button just a couple of pixels or a couple of points smaller than the wrapper. So I'm going to make the button 32 high and 146. This way there's four points in between this height and this height and this width and this width. All right, so let's take a look at that and look at that. There's our button. It's a functioning button and it looks pretty darn close to the original one. Let's zoom that out. There you go. Create your style. So that's pretty simple to do and you can do similar effects in your own applications. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to this channel to get your native script tips, tricks and tutorials and click the little bell so you don't miss any of those. I do all sorts of different types of tutorials on this channel. Some are more complicated, some are simple. So if you have any suggestions or questions, post it down below and I may create a tutorial on that. Just like I did with this alpha versus opacity tutorial. It's a very important topic, especially when it comes to performance. So check it out if you haven't seen that already. Here's some of the comments you left me. Leo Croft says, pretty awesome, needed that. Thanks, Leo Croft. Shiva says, hey, Alex, thanks for sharing this difference. After watching the video, this thought popped in my mind. If there are two layouts, one inside another one, with each of them having transparency set via alpha channel, would it cost the same in terms of performance when compared simply setting opacity in the outermost layout? And the answer is no, it would be different because the outer transparency would affect the inner one if you're using opacity. Akshay says, thanks, bro. And Alexandru says, hello, Alex. Great video again, as usual. Thanks, Alexandru. Would you like to do a video to show the difference between opacity, visibility and NGF? And this is a great idea because there is a difference. If you're using native script with Angular, NGF will have a completely different effect than setting opacity or visibility. And this is definitely a video that we must have on this channel. Thanks for that suggestion. Folks, if you have any questions or comments, you can also reach me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there. And I will see you in the next video. Happy native scripting.